welcome to How Inez Rolls. Today, Paul's in the kitchen with me. So we're gonna be showing you how to make a very yummy dinner. Let's get started. So this past week, I was able to do a grocery haul and right there, I got a roast for an incredible price. So Paul was really excited because he had some ideas. So we're he's going to be making a Dutch oven beef stew. Can you believe it? It's gonna be so good. So he is just gonna do some prepping. So this video is going to be over a couple of days because we're starting the prep and then tomorrow we will cook it. And so let's go see what Paul's doing. Hi, Paul. Hello. <laughs> so what is it that you're doing to the roast? I'm gonna cube it up into stew meat sizes. And then, uh, so let's take a look at this. I don't normally cook with a roast. So is that typical to have that flap like that? Sure. Let's Can just... somebody let me know down below if that's a typical thing? Cause we don't buy roasts very often. Let's just say it's part of the kill. <laughs> so that is a super sharp knife, huh? It is. And he got it for, from Amazon, right? I bought it off Amazon. And then because he is using it, or he used it and filled out like some like questionnaire. He got another knife for free. I did. That looks pretty good. So Paul just had a really good idea. The flap that was on the meat, he just cut right off. And we're gonna put it on the to the side and make maybe some street tacos with it. That's a good idea, right? Mm -hmm. So good. So now you can see we have some cube steak. All right, we got a good amount. How many pounds do you think that probably is? Oh, that's a few. A few, okay. Maybe like two, because we put like, I think it was three total. Okay, then maybe two. Two, yeah. Okay, so he is, what are you gonna do next? I'm gonna just season it and we'll wrap it and sit it in the fridge overnight. And then we'll do all the cooking tomorrow to it? Mm -hmm. We're gonna sear it, well, we can do it all tomorrow. Yeah, we'll do that all tomorrow. So season it, what are you gonna season it with? Uh, just Traeger rib. Season it with? English. Yes. <laughs> Traeger rib. <laughs> all right, so we'll see you tomorrow. Hey everybody, it's day number two, and we're gonna continue on with the beef stew that we're making for dinner tonight. And uh, what we're gonna do is, this is the meat that was cubed up yesterday, and I seasoned it with some rub, just a simple rub. Oh, that looks good. Hi guys, welcome to day two. Yeah, we woke up bright and early today. Bright and early, it is uh, almost 9.30. But we've been, we've been up for a little bit. Yeah, we've been. So. We're gonna, what are we gonna do with that meat right now? So this meat we're gonna brown up and get it ready to go into the, the Dutch oven. Okay. And the Dutch oven yesterday, I seasoned it because we've had this thing for years and, <laughs> and we have never ever used it. It's even Cabela's, you know, I love Cabela's. Yeah, we, we went to that store like in Utah like years and years ago and it was still in the box and yes. it was in our camping gear, right? Yes, and anyway. Then when we went camping with the Phillips at the at the um, Warm Springs, that's when we found it. Yes, and I, I we had one before and it kind of got messed up. And so this one, when I saw it, I was like, oh man, we got it. Yeah, and this one's a good something. one. All right, so he had to season it. It yeah. says it came pre-seasoned, but what did it suggest to do? So it, um, you can season it with like a lard or with, which we don't have lard. Or olive. Olive oil. Or which we don't have. oil, which we don't have. <laughs> so I put a little butter in it because, you know, it's fat. Yeah. Put a little butter in it on the inside. Put it out on the grill at like 250 degrees. Oh, so you had to bake it a little yeah. bit, huh? What about the lid? Did you have to do that too? I did, yeah. So on the inside here, I put butter here and here. Okay. Put it out on the grill. Some people will say that's that's not the right way to do it, but it is. It's fine. Okay. And then on the outside, I did um, just some spray on canola oil. Okay. So let's get that. Let's get some meat in there. We well, first we have to get everything ready. So we had we got some potatoes ready. I just cleaned about a bag and a half. I hope that's enough. Uh, that should be plenty. No, oh, I'm just kidding. I'm, I know it's going to be a lot. So I'm going to bake the other portion that isn't done, and then it will be a future um, dinner, like tomorrow or the next day. So 
excited about that. And this is going to be simple. We're not going to get all crazy with it, but it's going to no. be like the celery, carrots, potatoes, and beef. Yes. So this is going to be a traditional beef stew. So let's get started. Okay. okay. I wash my hands. Got a nice little sizzle. Are you only doing medium heat or you need to go higher? Medium is fine. Okay. We need bigger pans. Yeah, for real. We need one of those wok pans. The thick ones with the lid on They're it. Not, not a wok, but like those. Like a saute. Yeah. yeah. So we're, we're just trying to get them a little brown. Mm -hmm. All right, so Paul is chopping up some potatoes over here. About how many potatoes do you think that you're using? Um, after I cut these, it'll be seven. Seven, okay, that's not bad. And I'm kind of doing bigger potatoes and just cutting them into bite-sized chunks. Uh, we're a fan of the potatoes. <laughs> the and more, the better. We make it easy, we leave the skins on. Yeah, and I washed them up, so they're yeah. good to go. Just kind of quartering these here. Okay, and then, and then I just chopped up a whole thing of celery. So Paul's probably not going to use all of it. I'm just gonna let him take what he wants. And then whatever is left, I'm just gonna put him in a freezer bag and put it into the freezer so it can be for future soups or casseroles. And then with the baby carrots, there's no prep work involved. <laughs> Easy peasy. Looks like this meat is near done. And then we'll start putting it in the Dutch oven. Yep. And I was telling Inez I can I can smell the meat cooking, which is good because I haven't been able to smell her taste. My taste has been coming back, but not my smell. And how long has it been with that symptom, you think? Uh, two okay. and a half weeks. A couple weeks, yeah. Yeah. So, yep, he's doing much better, friends. So, this meat has lots of juice in it. Do you want to show how it made its own juice? Mm -hmm. So, we're going to use that as some of the beef stock yes that we'll be adding into this and um the rest i'm just going to use some chicken bouillon cubes so it'll have some good flavors and this meat is probably cooked to about medium um and yeah. it'll it'll cook through the rest of the way with, so we want we want it to get softened yeah. right as it's stewing in the dutch oven oh that looks really good Although it's probably like super rare, huh? <laughs> the bites. Well, Mediumish. Okay, so what Paul added as in the seasoning here? All he did? Did you use salt and pepper? No, I just because there's a lot of salt in the rub. Okay. So I just did. I did a basic Traeger rub, and then let that marinate overnight. Yeah. And then today, when it was cooking on the on the cooktop, I put in a tablespoon of minced onion. Mm -hmm a half a tablespoon of garlic powder and just a couple shakes of red pepper flakes. Perfect. And as you can see here, this pot has lots of room to put all the veggies in. So it looks like Paul may have cut a little bit too much. So what do you think, like more five potatoes? Yeah, it's probably about five. Five-ish. So we got, we filled up a lot of potatoes in here. So we're just gonna now add the rest of the vegetables that we want fill this up and then start adding some more of the liquid. All right, so we have our stock here ready, but Paul wants to add. I think some mild diced green chilies would just be a ton of flavor and it'd be good, super yes, good. Yes, yes, So we're just gonna sure. kind of spread it out over the whole thing. Oh, well, kind of spread it out over the whole thing. <laughs> now, when it's cooking, are we gonna be turning this? Um, or we just let it sit. So it's gonna just kind of sit and stew, so to speak, mm -hmm. kind of steam and and cook and then, everything. And then, and then it will make its own like flavor or juices coming out of like other vegetables and and more meat juice and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. it'll start making its own stock with the veggies too. Yep. So that's pretty hot. It is. But um, <laughs> I keep grabbing it. It's still hot. <laughs> um, so that's four cups, you guys. But I might need to do some more. So we're just gonna kind of gauge it. All right, so I just added the four cups of broth and it's it comes up to like about right down here. So not, not I don't think I need to make any more. And then I just added like some salt and pepper to the top since we just added all of those vegetables. So those potatoes will absorb a lot of that salt and all the flavor. So we definitely need to make sure that we have those seasonings. Now the broth has a lot of seasoning in it and the trigger rub that Paul used last night on the meat. But this is just to make sure it's just even like more seasoned. 
So Paul's got his uh, trigger smoking, which means it's doing what it's supposed to. Yeah, so I'm gonna put it in to start with the lid off. And then after half hour, so I'll put the lid back on. Will it taste smoky? No, not really. I only ask that, friends, because I am not a huge fan of the smoke taste. It's gonna have some, like, it won't taste campfire. Okay. It'll have some, uh. Just for flavor. Yeah, like almost like a, a hobo mill over. Yeah, campfire. I like those. I like those. Foiled mill, I guess. It's so nothing more. speaks like, um, a, a traditional fall meal of a beef stew, like having a 95 degree temperature. <laughs> Ah! But man, I'm craving it. I know, it's so fall, even though it's uh, 95 degrees. All right, so we're outside. It's only been about, what do you say, like 30 minutes, if that? Um, yeah, I think it's been like 20. 20, okay, so it's just kind of starting to give it a little turn. And those vegetables will probably like cook down too, right? Where yeah. they won't be looking so full in there. Yeah, and we just want the potatoes and the carrots to get fork tender. And and um, obviously the meat to cook all the way through. Yeah. But it's been on here with the lid off. I, I have the lid on to get the lid hot. Uh, on the grill, not on the... Okay, so you're going to put that on top of that now. Yes. So this has now gotten up to the same temperature as the other thing. That's correct. All right. So, so that'll cook the top a little bit. It'll start cooking from the top more, yes. Yeah. That's a handy tool. We are about to check it. It's been over an hour now. It's about an hour and a half total. It, the temperatures are like over 325. So let's take a look. The steam coming from now. There's a little tiny hole. Yeah, here. yeah. Wow. That's pretty awesome. That is looking so good. Now, do beef stews normally have that much juice in it? Um, they can. So it, it all depends. Like some are have a little bit more gravy. Some, are, some are more um, soupy. But yeah, yeah. Ultimately, I guess that's what separates a stew from a soup is the the amount of juice in it. Yeah. Now we're going to be adding a little bit something else to this to kind of like uh, thicken it up a little oh, bit more. That smells really good. It does smell good. And it, so it's probably most likely done. Now we're just kind of finishing it off, right? Yeah, in fact, let's uh, let's push on one of these potatoes here. Yeah, look at those potatoes. Are pretty just hot. breaking right open. Perfect. Hey, everyone. I'm, I'm a little more put together, so <laughs> you can see my face from day two. Anyways, um, we're going to be getting ready for church, so I'm almost done. I just need to do my hair better. But um, I am going to be making like a little... Um, is it, what is it, like a slurry or what? Yeah, like a thickener. Just. A thickener. So we're just gonna add a couple of tablespoons of Kamut flour and some milk, just a couple of tablespoons of milk just to kind of thicken that up. And then we're gonna add Worcestershire sauce. So that's gonna be so good. So we just have what looks like a, a pretty loose uh, pancake syrup, but it also has like a, like almost like a barbecue smell because of the Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire? Yes, sauce. So we're gonna go add that into the Dutch oven right now. So using the flour mix probably wasn't the best idea unless you want micro dumplings. So <laughs> it's still gonna be just as good. I'm just more used to using cornstarch, but um, I'm sure it's going to thicken up just fine. It might just take a little longer but I would highly recommend cornstarch to thicken up um, a soup if you're wanting that. But it's gonna be so good still. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Told you it'd be good. So we're just gonna cover that up, cook it a little longer, and see how that um, thickens up the, the juice, the, the stock, be good. All right, so Paul just brought it in. It looks really good. It thickened up a little. Did you want it to be more thickened? Um, I did, but... Uh, Do you want me to add some, like, corn starch? To no, it? as it sits, it... The, and it cools, it'll... The, yeah, the gravy inside will thicken up. I think it looks delicious. It smells really good, and I can't wait to try it. Yeah, neither can I.
Yeah, um. This meal is so good. Thanks for making it. <laughs> so thanks for coming by the channel. Give it a thumbs up for Paul making a meal. Wow. Uh, we're so grateful for him and, and grateful for you for coming by the channel. Have a wonderful day, rollers, and stick around. You just never know what we'll be rolling out next. Bye, everyone. Bye.